Okay, welcome back. Next up, we have a spotlight talk from Naveen Sharma, who is Vice President of Product at Stardog. Naveen is going to discuss how a knowledge graph enables business to drive rapid insight from increasingly varied and changing data resources. Remember that you can get the best view by maximizing your browser window. Naveen, please take it away. Thank you, Chris. Uh, as Chris mentioned, my name is Naveen Sharma. I'm the VP of product here at Stardog. And I'm here to talk about all things knowledge graphs, semantic layers, and how it enables data democratization in this new modern data world. So let's get right into it. One of the biggest challenges we find uh, with investments organizations are making around bringing a lot of their data, enterprise data together um, in data lakes uh, or cloud data warehouses is closing what we call the last mile. Uh, and the last mile of data democratization essentially means the ability for the consumers of that data you know, to be able to take advantage of all this data, this information, and utilize it for the benefit of their use case, um, their decisions, uh, their operations. And uh, where we find the challenges that typically lie when it comes to data democratization, it essentially boils down to really three main themes. One, data still lacks business context. And by what, what do I mean by that? So data is represented, is consolidated, is co-located, but what it doesn't do is provide business context. As you can imagine, when data gets pulled in from the various source systems, it loses that context. And these source systems are designed with a specific business process that they're trying to facilitate. And when you bring data out of those source systems, uh, you know, and land them into a data lake or, 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 a, or a cloud data warehouse somewhere, uh, you often lose that context. Uh, and of course, a lot of that data why is wide, i.e. It, it speaks to a specific set of information uh, in, a, in a given source system. And then you also want to understand what does it mean and how does it relate when you connect this data across those silos. Number two, we also find the fact that a lot of the enterprise data never does in fact make it into a data lake, right? So we still have a lot of operational data stores that uh, tend to hold um, you know, up-to-date information. Uh, that could be in terms of specific IoT events that are being collected or just the day-to-day -day operations uh, that are occurring inside of an enterprise that are being managed within these operational systems um, tend to tend to have the most up-to-date and complete information. And so from, a, uh, from an aspect of understanding what's available, what's there, and how does it relate uh, becomes another bigger issue for a lot of clients. And then lastly, you know, we, we also see the, the modern data tech stack. Uh, tools are still very much designed for citizen data users. So they are not in a position, uh, our tools are not designed for citizen data users and they're not in a position to self-serve, right? So there's still this dependency on uh, these specialized skill sets, whether a data engineer or data scientist to, uh, to enable and, and wrangle uh, this information and present it to a user in ways that they can utilize it in their context, you know, without having the requisite SQL skills or Python skills, which uh, which tend to be which tends to be the case in, in, in most of these uh, scenarios. So, consequences: data is data usefulness is limited. Uh, a lot of time and effort and energy is expended on trying to wrangle data. In the meantime, uh, we find a lot of organizations uh, you know miss out on key business opportunities because they don't have easy access and availability to all their data and in ways that they can understand and benefit for their specific use cases. So when we when we look at this sort of more broadly, and you can see this uh, represented in a quote from Gartner, this, these growing, growing level of volumes of data and distribution is only making the problem uh, harder uh, in terms of being able to exploit these assets, these data assets efficiently and effectively. And from Gartner's perspective, and we do agree, with this, which is where data and analytics leaders need to adopt a semantic approach. And what do I mean by semantic approach? I'll talk about that next. But the idea here is that there, there's going to be endless battle with data silos if that is not properly dealt with. So let's get into the, the, the meat of what we mean by semantic layer. 
So semantic layer is defined as essentially this business representation of all, in an organization's critical data, right? So in terms of enabling end user access to autonomously access this information by attaching meaning to that data element, right? So when we think about data, we don't think about rows and columns or uh, we don't think about primary keys and foreign keys. We think about it in the context of how what it means to us, products, customers, revenue, uh, and being able to represent the relationships between those concepts. That is really what a business representation means, and that's what a semantic layer enables. Now let's kind of look at it from a lens of how we how this manifests itself uh, in a data data architecture. So we know we have technical metadata, right? We have metadata that resides in these systems where we store a lot of this data, right? So what, what are the tables? What are the columns? What is the description of those tables and columns? But when we, add, when we add semantic enrichment to that metadata, we position ourselves uh, to gain new insight. And let's turn this around and actually use a real, real case, a real world example. Um, uh, again, this is a context of a very simple use case here, but the idea is that everyone's familiar with the, the British royal family. This is a representation of that royal family's relationship in the hierarchy, right? In terms of uh, the king and queen and their children and their children's children and their children's children's children, right? So there's a hierarchy that's neatly represented in terms of tables. Like, so you know the person ID, you know their name, you know their gender, but you also know the relationship between the person uh, that is the parent and the specific children associated with that parent. And this is a nicely, neatly structured set of tables. When it comes down to it, we see that there's a clear understanding of what the metadata is in terms of how it's stored. There's people, there's name, there's gender, there's ID identifiers for parent and children. There's actual instance of that data. And we kind of look at it sort of in a conceptual data model form. It's members who are related to other members in terms of this parent-child relationship, which is great. Now that is the actual representation of this data itself. But when we come down to the real world view, we know that ultimately the real world view is shaped by how we want to understand relationships beyond just the parent-child uh, 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 relationship in this scenario that goes beyond the parent, grandparent, siblings, cousins, Right? How do we understand those relationships that tend to be a lot more complex? Well, our options are what? Reshape the underlying data, create new data pipelines with complex transformations, or there is another option. Right? So the other option is we represent the data model as it's described on that screen on the left-hand side, just the schema of what we want to essentially understand. We don't reshape the data at all. So the underlying data never changes. We avoid doing any complex data transformations. And in fact, what we do is we infer relationships based on some domain understanding of the rules that dictate what a parent child or what a grandparent relationship is or what a sibling relationship is. And we do that through this power of inferencing. And really what that translates to is our ability to annotate the data model that we we, did, we talked about in the previous slide with domain specific rules. So if a parent is a child and parent person is a parent, a grandparent is the parent of a parent, and then a male sibling of a parent is the uncle of the child. Now these can be represented as if then else statements uh, that allows us to create these domain rules against that data model uh, on top of the data model, which itself is abstracted away from the underlying data storage and can now begin to give us new insight where we can ask questions like, who is Harry's grandmother? And we get the answers back. So new insights against the same data. So the table structure hasn't changed. We didn't write any complex ETL transformations. We didn't change the data model. We simply created a model that represented the real world and annotated that with domain specific rules. Now we can ask other questions like, who are all of Harry's relations? What are all of Harry's relationships, right? Cousins, siblings, grandmother, children, parent. Well, we can list them here, but that would be, just be too long. But you see on the left-hand side is that representation of all those relationships, nicely, neatly structured. Uh, and that provides that context that you need through the power of that semantically enriched metadata model that, that we have now brought to the forefront without having to change the underlying data storage or data model. 
So these use cases obviously, you know, are, 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 this, are not limited to a specific uh, industry. Um, in fact, anywhere where there is a need to understand uh, data that's connected across domains, uh, across business units, across business functions, across silos, this is uh, this power of semantically enriching data so that can abstract it above all the data that you have inside the enterprise. This enables a whole host of use cases in, in different industries from drug discovery in healthcare to manufacturing the digital twin and, and digital thread to uh, financial crimes or operational risk in, in, uh, in financial services. So again, these are obviously uh, not all the industries represented here, but you can imagine anything that has uh, this connected data need uh, and, and requires uh, citizen data users to have access to this data and, and uh, be able to make decisions quickly. This is essentially the, the, the ability for them to do so by adding the semantic layer that enriches the underlying uh, data landscape. So when we go back beyond that, you know, we know that even Gartner talks about this notion of a data fabric and, and within that data fabric approach is sort of this major important component, which creates this dynamic composable emergent knowledge graph that reflects everything that is happening to the data. And, and this core concept of the data fabric enables capabilities for dynamic integration and data use case and orchestration, right? So we believe that is a key component. And if you've been to Gartner's conferences, um, one of the key aspect of what they say is, is, is a key element of the data fabric is the secret ingredient called the knowledge graph. And how does that manifest itself sort of visually? You know, it almost looks uh, akin to taking the best of what we call the data mesh approach, right? This these domain specific uh, understanding uh, of uh, the different data connections that define what a vendor is, what a customer is, what a branch is, what a product is, what an agent or employee is, and bringing that connected knowledge across those domains and enabling a whole host of uh, applications or consuming applications inside the enterprise, whether in support of digital transformation initi initiatives, whether in, in support of advanced analytics initiatives, whether in support of just pure BI reporting, uh, or for that matter, uh, the ability for you to reuse, uh, based on open standards, uh, external data sharing as well. And, and all of that is manifested through the semantic layer, bringing this connected knowledge graph of business domains. So that basically translates to data silos being ingested and harvested in terms of the metadata, being able to access the data and federate over that data so you don't have to physically move or copy that data enriching that semantically with the uh, business meaning, creating those domain specific rules to infer new relationships, and then enabling it for whole host of applications, advanced analytics uh, and digital transformation initiatives. With that, uh, I will just say what we come down to is how does this all manifest itself, right? What are the skill sets? Well, skill set requirements tend to be where you can leverage your existing data modelers, your data engineers, your data scientists and analysts, where they can kind of operate sort of everything from a low code, no code, uh, persona specific user interface, all the way down to IDEs that are developed for you know, more advanced users. So there's a whole host of ways you interact with these, uh, with the knowledge graph platform that enables the semantic layer. And it's built for scale. Uh, one of the big things we get asked is, that's great, we've heard graph technologies uh, are limiting when it comes down to scale and scalability. Uh, and, and we have uh, proof points. Uh, are, these are publicly published uh, external references uh, held by external analysts uh, that demonstrate our ability to scale uh, knowledge graphs uh, and, and, and work uh, across this sort of federated approach where 85% of the data is virtualized and 15% of the data is materialized and still deliver sub-second query response times. And to be able to do so, uh, uh, on a commodity hardware uh, relative to our nearest competitor. And um, ultimately the last mile, right? So you incorporate all your data sources, you model as you think, you enable citizen data users with the outcomes of improving data analyst productivity. You reduce your time to market because you, you're, you're executing your analytics project much faster, two to three times faster. And in the process, you're uncovering new revenue streams to drive, uh, you know, create new value for your organizations. 
And if you are um, if you are interested, we have a, a detailed study on on what we call the uh, the economic impact uh, of deploying a semantic layer powered by a knowledge graph. Uh, the study is available on our website. Um, but again, you can see the demonstrable savings uh, of 9.8 million in an ROI over three years. A study that was conducted by an external third party uh, interviewing uh, our clients who have now benefited from a deployment like our technology uh, within their landscape. Uh, for those that are interested, uh, we have a session here for you. We for you have the opportunity for you to get started on your learning journey. Uh, try it out for yourself. Go to stardog.com, get started, uh, and then um, and uh, give us some feedback. Uh, with that, Chris, I'll turn this back over to you. Thank you, Naveen. Folks, if you have questions, take them over to the Stardog booth in the exhibit hall. There, you can use the chat to message the staff. While there, you can explore the resources they have to offer in their booth. And you can also find a demo from Stardog available on demand in the demo theater. Coming up in just a moment is expert speaker Julia Bardmesser, who will discuss how to position your data management capabilities around the concept of business value. I'll see you there.